What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, today we finish up our talks on the Phantom Rogue, and we are going to be building one of them together. After a bit of a controversial video earlier this week, it did pass, and so it's all, it's all good. I don't think it sucks, uh, but we are going to be building one of these together and I am excited for that. Before we jump into it though, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also make sure to share the video with your friends and click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. As always, I just want to quickly mention that you can of course get a nice document that is already formatted and helpful for you in following along and to bring you to your table for all of my build guides and subclass fixes by becoming a member by clicking that join button down below. For only $2 a month, you get access to all of my build guides and subclass fixes, all that good stuff that I'm going to be doing that I have already done. That whole library is available to you. Um, so please consider doing that, of course. Also, make sure that you are subscribed because there's a lot of new content coming this week and just, just in the future, right? I'm, I'm uploading today, tomorrow, and Sunday, uh, and then we're back into it with, with more Rogue next week. But uh, there's, there's a lot of really fun stuff happening on the channel, and so I don't want you to miss any of that. Okay, enough with the shameless plugs. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got for today. I've got a really fun build. Is this the most powerful build ever? Absolutely not. I, I fully recognize that what I have built today is not the most powerful way to play this rogue. However, I think it's a really fun way to play this rogue. Um, you know, it, to me, it's it's tough because this rogue, like I was telling you back on Tuesday, if you missed that, that's up in the eye card above. This one really suffers from all of its really good stuff, comes online so late, right? And so it's really tough. Most people aren't playing to even 13th level, much less 17th or 20th. So it's it's really tough, right? So I wanted to come up with something fun that does still get more and more powerful, even if it's not necessarily specifically with sneak attack, although that is very much involved. I wanted to bring something really fun. And I've been saying that I was gonna do this from the beginning, but this is the strength-based rogue that I was wanting to make. I, I think that this really fits because of how close we need to be two enemies when they actually die in order for us to get our tokens, right? So we have to be in close proximity, so I think being a melee character really fits with this, and I think there's some really fun stuff that we can do with it. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. I'll flash the rules one more time across the screen for you to check out for this series. And of course, if you have any concerns or comments or anything, leave them down below. But we'll start off with our race as always. And I'm going with a really fun one this week. Um, again, no custom lineage, no variant human. I try to not do those if I don't have to. Uh, and this week, I absolutely did not have to and I absolutely did not want to. This week we're going with something really fun, and it's a one that comes from the Van Richten book, and this is the Hexblood. Now the Hexblood is a really interesting race. Of course it has to do with hag magic, right? Uh, you are slowly becoming a hag, or you have made a deal with a hag. Uh, there, there are a couple of ways that you can go about this, but either way, you've picked up hag-like uh, attributes to you, which can be really flavorful and a lot of fun. And so I really wanted to embrace that spooky, creepy kind of thing. While hags aren't normally, you know, undead necessarily, they are still very spooky and creepy. And I think that mechanically speaking, they work well here. So I think that we can make it work, right? So what do we get with this? Number one, we get ancestral legacy. So what this does is it allows us to either keep some things if we started off as a different race, or we can swap some things out by being this new race. Ultimately, it doesn't really make a huge difference as far as our build, what you do. So I'm not gonna suggest you know an original race and then you switching to this. As far as I'm concerned, we're starting off as this. If you wanna do it differently, talk to your DM about that. It is an option out there, but we're just gonna assume that we're starting off as this and go from there. Then we also get Dark Vision, of course. We also get Eerie Token, which is similar to 
how we have our, our trinkets. So we're basically a klepto. We we like to, to collect a bunch of spooky, creepy things. Now the eerie tokens don't do anything close to what our trinkets are going to a little bit later, uh, but these give us some really cool features, especially as a rogue. Uh, it gives us a really nice surveillance feature, which is honestly one of the best things out there for a rogue, right? You basically get a non-magical way as long as you can get it where it needs to go of kind of like arcane eye sort of uh which is really cool i i think that this is really useful being able to uh have certain types of body parts that you know just little things here and there that can go wherever if you can plant it on somebody and then use that to surveil later uh there there's some really cool stuff that can that can come out of that and then of course hex magic also very important here we get access to two fantastic spells for a rogue hex and Disguise Self. Both of these are great for rogues because Hex is going to give us an additional D6 and it allows us to impose disadvantage on certain types of skill checks. With us being able to change what proficiencies we have on a day-to-day -day basis, being able to then give disadvantage on the opposing check makes it really likely that we're going to pass even if the stat is mediocre. So I really like this combination. I think it works really well. Honestly, I think Hex would come in handy a lot outside of combat rather than just within in order to get through some social situations as long as you can do it without being noticed. So I think that's pretty cool and I think it works well here. For our stats, of course, modified standard array that showed up earlier if you're using different type of stat array then your stats will be different and that's all good. Just adjust based on what's highest and go lower from there. We are gonna start off with our strength. Like I said, we are a strength-based rogue this time around. And so we are going with strength as our top stat, followed by constitution, because I want to make sure that we are able to live hits, seeing how we are going to be pretty much a frontliner. Then dexterity, because we have to have at least a 13 dexterity in order to multi-class. A 12 wisdom for those saving throws, that kind of thing, 10 charisma, eight intelligence the charisma and intelligence are interchangeable doesn't really matter there to me um, i'm gonna go charisma just because we could use our ability to change up the skill checks for something like deception or persuasion and then go against insight and so we could ultimately you know use that to our advantage and so i don't want it to be negative so neutral is at least something. Of course, we get a plus two and a plus one with the hex blood. And so we're gonna put our plus two into our strength and our plus one into our dexterity. And eventually we will, uh, we will buff up that constitution to an even number, but we will get there in just a little bit. For our equipment, we are going to go with a rapier. Um, you could go with like a double bladed scimitar. Some people liked going that way. It's kind of a weird weapon to me, so I'd rather go with the rapier because it deals a little bit more damage. That's just me. Um, with this build, it does not make sense to try to do any kind of dual wielding because we're going to need our bonus action a lot of the time, or at least we have something better to do than doing an offhanded attack. So just one weapon is good. If you want a shield, you can use it on this build. Um, it would work fine. I, I don't I don't think it's necessary, but it's it's fine if you want it. And then we're gonna go with medium armor this time around because our dexterity isn't great. Uh, it, it gives us that plus two bonus, which is the most that medium armor is going to help us out. And so I think going medium armor is just going to work out better for us in the long run. We're gonna wanna make sure we take our expertise in stealth because you may have armor that gives you that disadvantage there. And so may need to work on that a little bit, but I'm sure you'll be able to get by. So with all that out of the way, let's start taking some levels here. And we are not starting with Rogue. I know I start away from the class all the time. And you know what? I'm not starting in Fighter either. I've had people complain in the past that I start with Fighter on a lot of things. There are no Fighter levels in this entire build. I'm sure all of you are very proud. Let me know in the comments how proud you are. Uh, yeah, no Fighter levels at all. Instead, we're starting with Barbarian. That's right, we're going Barbarian and Rogue this week because I had to throw it somewhere and I, I think that this concept works really well on this build and I really, really like it. Does it take forever for it to get going the way I want it to? 
Yes, but so does the Phantom Rogue, so what are you gonna do? Uh, so at level one, we're gonna be a Barbarian, and of course, we're gonna get Rage and Unarmored Defense. We're not gonna be using Unarmored Defense because we're going to be obviously wearing armor, but of course, Rage is the staple of the Barbarian, which is great. We're, we're really here for the, mainly for the ability to deal extra damage, and the resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. That, that's the big two that we're gonna get out of this. And then maybe you'll get the strength check and all that stuff. Maybe that'll come up later, but um, for the most part, we're here for the resistance. And then of course, we're going to also be dealing a little extra damage. At Barbarian 2, where you're going to grab Reckless Attack and Danger Sense. Danger Sense, of course, allows us to do a little bit better into those deck saves uh, because we are not so great in dexterity on this build. That's nice, um, and we don't have dexterity saving throw proficiencies because we started in Barbarian. Um, in fairness, you could start Rogue, and this build would work fine, but I wanna go ahead and get Rage going, and I think that the, the kit here ultimately works best, and it also, we need it for our armor proficiency, so that's why we started with the Barbarian there. Um, we, of course, can then attack recklessly, which is great because then that gives us advantage on all of our attacks for that turn which is free sneak attack as far as I'm concerned, which is fantastic. That's where the real advantage here comes. Um, and this also is why when you look at the Elven Accuracy feat, not that we're eligible for it in this build, uh, that's why it does not include strength is because strength is so easy to get advantage with because of a two level dip into Barbarian. So this is great, free sneak attack as far as I'm concerned. Yes, attacks are gonna be hitting you with advantage, but ultimately it's worth it because we have resistance and we're going to be making ourselves that much tougher as we go as well once we add some rogue levels on. Speaking of which, we're going to start taking rogue now. We are not going to take a subclass just yet and it's actually going to be a very long time before we take a subclass in Barbarian. Um, I, I think that just getting that reckless attack is enough for me for now and I want to go ahead and start getting my sneak attack damage online. I want to go ahead and start getting some of my uh, subclass features going for rogue, all that good stuff. So we are putting off taking Barbarian 3 for a very long time. We'll get there eventually, don't worry, it'll happen, but uh, it's gonna be a, a hot minute. At Rogue One, of course, we get Expertise, Sneak Attack, and Thieves Cant. Expertise, I would probably go with Stealth here because your armor may grant you disadvantage, unfortunately, so that would help to counteract that at least a little bit. Um, sneak Attack, of course, one of the main reasons we're here to deal extra damage, and of course, if we have advantage, then we are golden and reckless attack grants us that for free. Sneak attack does not require that you use dexterity to attack. The weapon just has to have the finesse property, which of course the rapier qualifies for, which is great. So just a little distinction, you can use strength and get sneak attack, totally fine, as long as the weapon has the correct property. At Rogue 2, we are going to get Cunning Action, and this of course gives us a great deal of things that we can do on our bonus action. Now, of course, we also have Rage at this point that we can do on a bonus action, and that is likely going to be the first thing that we are going to do, but Dash, Disengage, and Hide are all really great bonus actions, so definitely we'll be using those a lot. Then at Rogue 3, we get our subclass, which of course grants us Whispers of the Dead, Wails from the Grave, and Steady Aim. Whispers of the Dead gives us that, that versatility feature that allows us to change proficiencies based on when we rest, which is great. That, that can really, really help out. I definitely would not take expertise in one of these skills. I'm not sure how that works, is if you take expertise in, in a skill and then you lose proficiency and then gain it back. Sounds like a waste to me, uh, so definitely don't do that. Uh, but it's it's something I guess that you can do. Uh, yeah, Whispers of the Dead is pretty cool though and allows you to really be a lot more versatile than your average rogue, especially outside of combat, which is pretty cool. Then Wales from the Grave allows you to kind of deal some spread damage. Like I said before, it's limited, and a lot of times when I'm looking at features like this, I want to deal extra damage to the target I actually was aiming at, and something like that doesn't happen until way later in the build. So, it is what it is, it's fine. Uh, we also get Steady Aim here, which normally would be great for rogues, but we really don't need it because we have our Reckless Attack, so probably won't even be using that at all. At Rogue 4, we get our first ASI or feat. Yes, we're level 6 and we're just now getting a feat, but that's totally fine. And we're going to take Piercer. Of course, the Rapier is a piercing weapon and it is 
pretty nice with the piercer feat. Of course, when we deal damage with this weapon, we can actually re-roll some of our dice, which is pretty great. Uh, can lead to higher damage rolls. Uh, it could be just the same. It could be worse, but uh, definitely could help. And of course, it makes our crits a little bit more viable there. It also is going to round off that odd strength score, which feels really good. At Rogue 5, we get Uncanny Dodge, which is a great defensive feature. Gives us something to do on our reaction. And we already have resistance, and now we can have the damage again. So... Yeah, this is pretty great. You know, I I've said before, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing is going to be 90%, if not more, of the damage that you're going to take over the course of a campaign. And so you're going to have resistance to almost all of it, and then you can cut it in half again, which is just wild. And that's once per turn, as many times as you want. We're really tanky. Th this is a really, really tanky build so far, and it's just going to get better. At Rogue 6, we get our second round of expertise, so pick two more skills that you want to double that proficiency bonus in. Always going to be a great thing. Rogue 7, we get Evasion. So not only did we get Danger Sense to boost up our ability to pass those dexterity saving throws, but now if we pass them, we take zero damage. Or if we do somehow fail it miraculously, then of course we're only going to take the half damage. So yeah, this is wow. We're really good at not taking damage from dexterity saving throw type of effects, whether that's a trap or a fireball or whatever it is. And we take very little damage during our turn, which is really, really great. And it's just going to get better. At Rogue 8, we get our second ASI or feat. And I'm going to go with a really fun option that I think works well in this situation. And that is the Sentinel feat. The Sentinel feat, of course, is the get back here, you don't get to run away type of thing. The biggest thing is that it is tied to opportunity attacks, which of course a rogue is going to love because you will then have access to sneak attack once again, which is really, really nice. It also can keep that creature right there with you, which is what you want to do, especially as we get higher and higher level and do even better. Uh, and, and like I said, this is just going to compound a little bit more as we go. Um, but yeah, the Sentinel feat is really, really cool. Helps us with our opportunity attacks, turns their speed to zero when they try to get away. And I absolutely love that. A Rogue Nine, we get tokens of the departed, which is kind of that main feature that I was talking about. I wish we got it at Rogue Three unfortunate but uh, it is what it is this gives us these little soul trinkets that we can carry around with us gives us advantage on death saves and constitution saving throws which is fantastic uh, so we're never getting drunk again which is which is just funny uh, i love that uh, we also are then going to be able to uh, burst them in order to use whales from the grave for free which is cool you can also use them to talk to spirits but i personally don't think that that's going to be all that useful again if you missed our video on tuesday we talked about that, how I just don't think that it's all that great, but eh, whatever. Then Rogue 10, we get another ASI or feat. And as if it wasn't bad enough, as if we weren't hard enough to kill, we're taking the tough feat. The tough feat just makes way too much sense here. Uh, we're, we're already just, just shrugging off every hit, so we might as well just be able to shrug off more hits by uh, increasing that HP number by quite a bit and I love that. Then at Rogue 11, we get Reliable Talent, which is just going to make our skill checks even better, and this combos really well with our Whispers of the Dead, which is nice. Um, I, I like all of that together. It all, it all works together very well. Rogue 12, we get a bonus ASIR feat, which is really cool, and I'm taking a really weird one that I I may have taken once on more like a meme type build. We're taking the chef feat. And the only reason we're taking the chef feat is because it's a half feat that boosts constitution and I don't need resilient. <laughs> uh, we started with barbarian and so I, I don't need the resilient feat. And so here we are taking chef because it's one of the only other ones that isn't locked to a specific race. Uh, chef feat is, is fun. It, it's not incredibly good, uh, especially not at this level. You're probably hardly ever going to use the features here. It's really more for just the half feet type of aspect. You can just as easily take a plus two in constitution and get the same benefit out of this pretty much. But I think chef is fun and that's that's what we're gonna do. So we're taking chef feet right there, cannon. Uh, then rogue 13, we get ghost walk, finally. <sighs> this is what I've been wanting the entire build and it took me 15 levels to get here. <sighs> Takes forever. So this gives us 
the ability to have disadvantage on attack rolls against us, which is insanely good, especially since we already shrug off attacks. This makes them maybe not hit, which is pretty cool. It also helps to cancel out our reckless attack, which is also really good. And I, I love that. I, I think that those work really, really well together. I think it's just, it's just awesome. Then let's make it even better by going back to Barbarian for Barbarian 3. This is where things get spicy. Yes, it's 16th level and things are just now getting spicy, but you know what? That's because the Phantom Rogue takes forever to get off the ground. We are going to take our subclass here and it is going to be the Ancestral Guardians. One of my favorite subclasses out there. Uh, I, I personally consider it to be one of the most perfectly balanced Barbarian subclasses out there. It's a ton of fun, there's a lot of flavor, and it's a really good, more defensive support Barbarian. Really cool, definitely check that out. I've, I made a video about that a long time ago up in the iCard above for you to check out. But we get a couple of things here. We get Ancestral Protectors, which gives disadvantage on attack rolls against other creatures, but not us. Except that we already have Ghost Walk, which gives disadvantage on us. So if you're not reckless, there's disadvantage on everything, which is cool. Or at the very worst, you go reckless and it's normal into you and it's disadvantage on everybody else. That's pretty cool. Plus you have Sentinel if they try to get away and negate this. So it's a pretty gnarly combo. And I, I think that this all works together really well. I wish we'd been able to do this about six levels sooner, but it is what it is. We also get Primal Knowledge, which is kind of similar to how our um, how our Whispers of the Dead works. Uh, so those kind of compound together as well, which I think is really fun. Um, yeah, really, really cool. These, these subclasses work really well together, but obviously it takes forever to get off the ground. In Rogue 14, we get Blind Sense, which is fine. You know, because we are a melee rogue, I think it gives us a little bit more usage, um, but you know, ultimately it's not the most busted thing out there. It's fine. Then you get to a part of the build where you can you can kind of, you know, choose your own adventure here. You could go Rogue 15 here, which would give you Slippery Mind. And I, I do think that that's useful, especially uh, given that we are at the core a Barbarian. Um, that's cool. But I think that it'd be better if we go ahead and finish out to Barbarian 5 and get extra attack and then we come back and grab Slippery Mind as our capstone. That's what I'm gonna do, but of course this could go a couple of different ways. Um, if you do stick with Rogue, of course you would end up getting to Rogue 17, and that would give you the, the feature that allows you to deal the extra necrotic damage to the target that you attacked. So definitely viable there, uh, but I'm gonna go for extra attack here. That's just me, but the other way definitely makes total sense. So we'll get another ASI at Barbarian 4. Honestly, it's pick your favorite. I, I probably would boost my constitution by another two uh, and, and go from there. That's probably what I would do, but uh, it's, that's honestly up to you. And then we get extra attack as well as fast movement at Barbarian 5, which is cool. So we're going a little bit faster now, about 10, 10 foot faster, uh, which is great. And then finally, Rogue 15 at level 20, and we get Slippery Mind, which helps us out with those wisdom saving throws. So what do you think of this week's build? It's a little off the wall, I get it. It's a little different, but I think it's a lot of fun and I think that you would have an amazing time playing as this. Before we leave today, we're gonna do some honorable mentions and so we will go ahead and jump into that. For other multi-classing options, I've got three really cool really cool ways of doing this. Number one is the Sorcerer and more specifically the Shadow Sorcerer. Why, what other way would we be spooky than being a shadow sorcerer? This allows you to create darkness and of course attack through said darkness while being able to see in it. And that of course gives you advantage. Rogue things, really cool, works, works really well there. Um, of course, fighter. The fighter actually works best here. I don't actually think that the Battlemaster is the best option. I actually think the Cavalier is the best option for similar reasons to why we went with the Ancestral Guardians. Um, there are a couple weird things with the Cavalier, but I really do like it. And I think it works well here, especially if we take a specific feat that I'm going to mention here in just a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. And finally, the Hexblade Warlock. I think that that would work really well here as well. Again, I think this build works really well in melee because especially if you're doing like Shadow Sorcerer stuff, the problem with that is that you are creating darkness around yourself and then your allies can't see and that can be a real problem, unfortunately. Um, so definitely gotta be careful with that um, and definitely can be a little frustrating for people at your table. 
four other feats that we could take. Honestly, my like top of my list is Ritual Caster, which is a weird one. I, I hardly ever mention this feat, uh, but it's really not bad. It's just one of those that doesn't fit a lot of builds, unfortunately. We don't have time for it. Um, but here I think it works great. You can take this and eventually what you would do is try to get a hold of Phantom Steed. Phantom Steed, of course, would allow you to ride on a horse and be able to do your thing. It's really cool here because this may not be what you would do with a Barbarian build, but it allows you to actually steady aim while being on a horse and you don't actually suffer the movement penalty, right? You just suffer the losing your bonus action. So I think that works well. I think it works well with the with theming here. So definitely consider taking that. Again, not with a Barbarian build, uh, with something ranged, but still a lot of fun. Warcaster is also a really cool one if you were going to take a little bit of magic there or if you're wanting to make sure that you maintain your hexes from the hex blood, you could do that as well. Um, definitely can help out with that. We already get proficiency by being a barbarian on this build, um, but of course you can't do barbarian things and hex things at the same time. So could help if you, if you went with fighter or some other kind of melee type of thing. Finally, other races that we are going to mention here. And the first is the Halfling, and more specifically, the Ghost Eyes Halfling, because spooky. And I think that this actually is, is pretty cool. It gives us kind of a telepathic communication type of thing, which works really well with rogues. I love that. Uh, and then we also get the Reborn. I, I love the Reborn. It's another one from the Van Richten book. It's a little redundant just because both this race and when you get your spirit tokens, uh, you of course get your advantage on death saves on both sides of that. So uh, it's a little redundant there, but still really, really cool. And finally, if you wanna be a spooky elf, you can be a Shatter Kai and Shatter Kais work really well with this as well. So that's our build for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Tomorrow, we are posting our draft analysis of a brand new league that we have been invited to, and I'm super pumped about that. We've got our corner finals match for UNPL playoffs going up on Sunday, and we then are going to move on to the next Rogue in the sequence next week, which I believe is the Scout. So I am looking forward to that. Until next time, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.